Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show where we show you how to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. I am Commander Chiefskate, and today is another edition of Age of the Realms. Warhammer Age of Sigmar Battle Report number 12. This is a 1500 point match battle between myself of my Wild Hunt, which is my 7th army, versus my buddy Burps of Blood of State Gums Legion. It is an Ogre Kingdom's army. So it's been a while since I got one of these AOS battle reports put out there. It's been a while. I've been laid out with a back injury. I've been primarily been focused on the coming to Ninth Age. Now it's time to go back to my roots and get back to the Ninth uh, with the uh, Age of Sigmar battle report. So yeah, let's see what happens with 1,500 points of Sylvaneth go up against 1,500 points of Ogre Kingdoms. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about my Wild Hunt. It is a 15,000, uh, not 15,000, sorry, 1,500 points Sylvaneth army. For my leaders, I have Durthu. He is a Spirit of Durthu with the Gift to Giron command ability, with the command traits, as well as Koado, who is my Treeman Agent armed with the Briar Sheath. So I got that kind of minus one to hit on my Treeman Agent, and I got auto uh, healing for Durthu. For my Battle Lines unit, I have two Battle Lines. The first one is a Court of Summers. It is 10 Dryads of the Branch Diff, and the Court of Winters is another unit of 10 Dryads with the Branch Diff. For my other units, we have three units of Kernoth Hunters, three Kernoth Hunters apiece. We have the Troop of Dusk, which is armed with the Huntmaster, as well as Kernoth Greatswords. The Troop of Dawn, who also has a Huntmaster and equipped uh, with Kernoth Greatswords. And finally, the Troop of Twilight. There are three Kernoth Hunters armed with a Huntmaster, as well as Kernoth Greatbows. So that's my other one as well. The battalion I use for this one is the Free Spirits Battalion, and uh, that brings up my total to 1,500 points for this one. All right, so let's talk about Stinkum's Legion. is a 1,500-point Gutbusters army. The leader is a man named Stinkum. He's a uh, tyrant. He's got the Nothing Left Standing command trait as well as a Collar of Domination, so he's geared to fight against monsters, which is kind of appropriate for this one. Next, you have Morbidly Obscene. That is his Butcher, so those wake up as two leaders for this one. For his battle line units, he's got three units of Ogres. He has the Bulls, which is nine Ogres with a Crusher, Billower, Tribal Banner, and Iron Fist. The Breakers, which are three Ogres with a Crusher, Billower, Tribal uh, Banner, as well as Iron Fist. And the Wreckers, who are three Ogres with a Crusher Bellower, as well as Tribal Banner with Iron Fist. Next, he also has the Boomers, which are three Lead Bolters with Thunder Fist, as well as Bellower. For his other units, he has the Full Metal Marauders, who are three Iron Guts with the Gut Lord, Bellower, as well as a Ruma Bear. And of course, he has the War Pig, which is his Gorger for that one as well. And he also has Vitai for this one. It is a Gut Buster War Tribe. Assemble the Army! All right, so let's go ahead and get into deployment. As you can see here, we are fighting on a six by four table. Once again, our table is all set up. Both armies have been assembled. My opponent basically won the initiative on this one, so he wanted to deploy uh, using the uh, long axis of the targets. So we're now deploy right right smack down in the middle. We're exactly 24 inches apart from one another. And so now, oh, actually, not exactly 24 inches. Actually, there's 24 inches between him and the center board of the board. I actually kept mine back a little bit. We'll talk about that more in detail as we get to the individual deployment zones. All right, here's a close-up of my deployment for my Sylvaneth army. Because I'm running a Free Spirits Battalion, all three of my Kurnoth units are located right in front of the Sylvaneth well that I'm allowed to bring out to the battlefield. I also have Coedel there on the left-hand side as well as Durthin there on the right-hand side. And right between them, I have the iPad of Destiny, which has my uh, rule books for this one. So my battle tomes so that I can look at the rules as they're going at this. Uh, basically, the plan is pretty simple. I kind of set up towards the middle of the, uh, the last third of the board. My idea is to basically do the same thing I always do, summon up some Sylvaneth Wildwood, have my opponent approach me, and eventually catch him in the middle, and and envelop him and destroy him. So that's pretty much the plan I had going for this one. So as you can see there, I have my uh, all my units kind of stationed right there. My drag units are waiting in the ether, waiting to use uh, journeying along the spirit paths. So yeah, that makes it the plan for the summit on this one. All right, here's the plan for the Ogre King. We see on the left-hand side, as you can see there, we have our uh, three units of uh, different ogres we have there. We have the uh, Crushers, no, sorry, the crush. Yeah, we have the wreckers actually on the left hand side, followed by the uh, full metal maniacs over there as well with the iron guts. And then, of course, you have that huge, huge chunk of, uh, of ogre flesh called the bulls. Either side of that, you know, on the left hand side, you have his tyrant stink. On the right hand side, you have morbidly obscene. He's also coming at the side there on the right hand side as well. And then, right next to them, of course, another three man unit of uh, ogres. Those are the breakers. And make up his army's far right flank. There you have the uh, boomers, which are the three lead belchers that are located on that side. And then right back on the back, you have the war pig. That is his gorger. His gorger, of course, is just kind of hanging in the back because that guy has ambushing rules. He gets a pop up right after his first move phase. So that makes up uh, deployment for the overkinnons. With that, we go to top of turn number one. 
All right, so this is the top of turn number one for the Sylvaneth. This is basically during the command phase. As because I got to deploy first, I got to deploying all my troops, I was also allowed to pick the size to go first. I decided to go first in this part. And basically, I used both Dirt Thieves' Treasing ability and also used uh, Coedel's Sonia to more well with uh, make him cast his spell as well. As you can see there, basically, I planted up the new series of Sylvaneth Wildwoods right there in the middle of the battlefield, right between the two existing woods uh, right there in the middle. But the idea was that I'm going to create those woods there, so that way my opponent has to cross those woods and engage my troops right in the front with my uh, with my units of uh, Kurnoth hunters, and then of course after he crosses that threshold, I'll pop up my dryads and I'll have them completely surrounded, and we just start you know destroying them with a full envelopment tactic. That was the plan. That was the idea and the purpose behind this scheme. And uh, since I really don't have a plan on moving for this battle uh, for this one too much, and since there's no charges or shooting whatsoever, uh, that pretty much rounds up turn number one for the Sylvaneth. So with that we go to bottom turn number one for the Ogre Kingdoms. All right, so this is the top of turn number one for the Ogre Kingdoms. This is also after the movement phase. Command phase, not much really happened because there's no need for her, my opponent to take bravery checks, so Bristol Blood didn't do his uh, command ability for that one. I uh, was out of range of spells, so basically what they did is they just kind of ran everything up as quickly as they possibly could. So as you can see there, this tired, tidal wave of Ogre Flesh is running up to me to trip to me as quickly as possible, which is kind of funny because that's another reason why I set that barrier so enough Wildwoods, because if they run across those Wildwoods, they will have to take dangerous terrain tests. If they uh, roll a one, uh, that Ogres will just drop off and drop off like flies and that happens and so that's kind of bad for them for him to do that so because that he just kind of runs up to the forest and just kind of waits his time there on the far right hand corner there in the back of the board as you can see there we have the war pig um burps of blood deployed his gorge right behind there and try to put him in some pressure on coedel my tree man agent so yeah that makes up movement and command for this one Here's a close of all those ogres just kind of running up towards me, and then there's a lot of ogres there. You can see that you got the records, the breakers, as well as the bulls kind of running up there as well. You got the full melomaniacs make up there on the left hand side, especially with those uh, three boomers, uh, the three lead vultures as well. You can see his tyrant kind of lagging behind a little bit between the bulls as well as the uh, breakers, and then the other side there, you can see that his uh, butcher is also kind of right behind the bulls as well. So that's the close up on this one. And here's a close-up of the war pig, kind of deployed up on my lines and starting to get towards Coedel and making me a little bit antsy because uh, I'm not sure what this Gorger can do. I'm not sure how uh, Coedel will stack up in close combat with this guy because uh, Gorgers are actually kind of scary. So uh, with that, we go on to turn number two and we roll for initiative on that one. And luckily for me, I got the initial on that one. So turn number two goes to the summon of this one. This is a photo after command phase. As you can see, I summon up two more Wasmoneth Wildwoods. Uh, Coedel cast his uh, Sony Wonder Ball, a Sylvaneth Wildwood spell over there on the right hand side of the center. So as you can see there, he kind of deployed his, uh, the top center party, deployed another Sylvaneth Wildwood over there, caused some mortal wounds to hit those uh, boomers, which is kind of cool in my opinion as well. Also, uh, for Durthu, I summon up a new unit, uh, new Sylvaneth Wildwood right between Coedel as well as the War Pig. So if the War Pig ever tries to charge at Kodo has got to cut through those Sylvaneth Wildwood. He has to take Ranger's terrain test. So that was basically the idea behind that one. So that makes a command phase on this one. As you can see here, here's a close-up of the Sylvaneth Wildwood inflicting three mortal wounds onto one of the boomers, which is always awesome in my opinion. So that just took place. And here's a close-up of my other Sylvaneth Wildwood stopping the war pig dead in his tracks and running from charging the Coedel. So with uh, that out of the way, we go directly on to uh, the other portion of the command phase because with my special abilities for my um, for my battalion, for my free uh, free spirits battalion, I can actually make full movement roll uh, movements with my uh, Kurnoth Hunters. So let's go ahead and talk about how those guys look like here in a little bit. All right, and this is the second half of the command phase. With my battalion special rules, I'm allowed to move up my free spirit battalions, many of the battalions, up to their full movement allowance uh, and during the hero phase, so long as they're moving towards a certain objective or a certain model, they actually get a little bit further than they actually kind of started off. Uh, as you can see, there with my uh, Kurnoth hunters there, and the, the, the ones with close combat, equipped ones with the great swords, they move their full movement allowance. As my Kurnoth hunters with the longbows, they kind of move up an inch as well. And to be honest, I think this is where I made my first mistake because I realized really quickly after doing this that maybe I shouldn't have moved all that often because the plan was to have those ogres cross through the Sylvaneth Wildwoods into the clearing in the middle and then surround and pound is basically what the idea was. And I can't do that after moving my guys up uh, that quickly right in the middle of cover where there's no Sylvaneth Wildwoods to provide them cover. And I realize now that I made a huge mistake. You know, I was kind of enamored with the fact that I can move these guys up with my with my ability for my battalion and this guy like oh wait a minute oh what am I doing what am I doing I'm betraying my plan and I'm going against everything I knew so yeah that's one of my first big mistakes of this army but anyways it's been a while so you know I have an out so yeah that makes a command phase and I'll do the movement phase now 
And as promised, we decided to go with the move phase, and nothing says I'm going to follow through on a bad plan like just committing fully to that bad plan. And that's exactly what I did. I realized that I could kind of sort of salvage the situation. What I had to do is keep my troops on the other side of these Sylvaneth Woods, have my opponent charge through the woods to try to get to the other side of the woods to get back my guys, cause some dangerous terrain tests, tests and uh, make them lose some people, and then uh, basically hold the line at that point and then close in and destroy them. So that's what I did. As you can see, I just deployed the rest of my army as well. I teleported Durthu as well as Kodil on the spirit pass. I also summoned up my dryads as well. They made it when they rolled off on that navigating the spirit pass chart. Uh, chart. They actually made it to their lieutenant destinations. So everything just kind of moved up and getting ready to receive the charge from the ogres. All right, so here's a close-up of my units that just kind of deployed there, kind of like in the left-hand wing of my army. You see they've got Durthu. We also got the Court of Summers right next to them with my Dryads. After that, we have the uh, Troop of Dusk as well as the Troop of Twilight, making up this kind of arc of the wings. So, yeah, that's close-up on this one. And here's a close-up on the right-hand of the wing. As you can see, we have the Troop of Dawn, make up the uh, left side there with my three... Uh, Karnath Hunters, and kind of, you can kind of make them out there on the far right-hand side of the board. Uh, that's the uh, the Court of Winners as well, and the right behind them we have Coedel. So I moved Coedel up and made Pack uh, the Pat War Pigs uh, uh, advance the back, just kind of irrelevant at that point. So yeah, everybody's kind of positioned where they're at, ready to receive a charge, and basically duke it out at that point. All right, from there we go directly into the shooting phase. As you can see in the uh, the zoom out for this picture, basically I put some paint on it when it basically came down the shooting phase. So let's, let's go and break down the individual movements on that part. As you can see in this picture, I basically rolled out of the box for Durthu's Lamentation of Despair Spolt uh, 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 shooting ability. I actually rolled like a bunch of sixes uh, when it came to the uh, a bunch of fours and fives uh, for the base ability to hit. I rolled a bunch of sixes to wounds because I was able to plink off uh, two of those ogres right off the bat. It was ungodly the amount of damage I did to those guys. I managed just to uh, vaporize most of the guys who were in that unit, so that part was kind of cool as well. And also on the right hand side there with the tire, you can see the little red die that indicated the number of wounds you took. I had my great bow wielding uh, Kurnoth Hunters open up on him, actually managed to put him down to half health, so that part was pretty epic as well. Here's a close up of the uh, tyrant who basically got hit with those Kurnoth great bows that dropped him down three mortal wounds, so actually that part was actually pretty epic on that part as well, so very, very satisfying their performance so far. And shooting here in the right hand flank was also pretty epic as well. Coedel cut loose with his Doom Tendril staff, managed to plink off the floating wound carrying a uh, lead bolster, and managed to put two more on the other guy as well. So that part was actually pretty freaking epic on that part. So yeah, that makes up shooting for this one. As you can see during the battle shock phase, that unit of ogres basically just took off after the B they took down from a Durthu's Lamentations of Despair shooting. So that part was pretty awesome. And as you can see in the battle shock phase with this one, the uh, those poor lead builders basically just took off. They rolled like a six or something like that on their battle shocks. The other two models just took off as well. So those uh, lead builders no longer threat. So with uh, battle shock uh, phase out of the way, we go directly to turn number two for the ogres. All right, so this is the bottom of turn number two for the Ogre Kingdoms, uh, right for during the command phase. As you can see in this uh, picture, Kuildil takes three mortal wounds. What happens is, is that the Butcher casts the Moss spells, what he does. I was unable to successfully unbind that spell, so because of that, he got maximum wounds on that part and put the three mortal wounds onto Kuildil. Luckily for me, I remember he rolled again to see if the Great Maw would keep on chewing on my poor Dream Man Agent. He rolled a one, and so the Great Maw went away. But man, that was pretty scary on that part. Uh, the only magical item I have for uh, my uh, Dream Man is the uh, is the briar sheath which allows him to uh, take a minus one to hit whenever anyone tries to target him for close combat attacks but uh, looking at that looking back now I need to go I might have to go back with the hagbane spikes that way I could actually you know crush that kind of thing from happening ever since uh, that kind of thing happening from again with uh, my enemy casters on that part so that just happened However, there is a silver lining on that. Because the Butcher was so close to the Sylvaneth Wild Wood right there in the middle when he cast his spell, basically we got to see if that thing got roused by his magic and decided to lash out. I rolled a 5 on that part, so all three of those units. We have the uh, Bulls right there in the center, as well as the Butcher, as well as the Breakers on the right-hand side. They all took mortal wounds. The uh, the, the Bulls, which that huge uh, you know, six ogres, they took three mortal wounds. The Butcher took three more wounds, mortal wounds as well. And then, of course, the Breakers took one mortal wound as, on that part as well. So even though I did not have the Hagbane Spite, it still kind of caused a little bit of pain back to my opponents because they cast spells so close to the uh, Simoneth Wildwood. But if I did have the Hagbane Spite, I could have the option of actually cat using that item and actually killing off my opponent's uh, Butcher, which would have been pretty awesome as well. But uh, alas, I didn't. So that makes the hero phase for this one. 
All right, so with the command phase done, you can see here we go directly into the move phase, and as you could probably see here, almost everything within the Ogre Kingdom's army moves forward. They don't really run, they just move up their movement maximum movement allowance, because if they run through some of that force, uh, they gotta take dangerous terrain text, tests. Which is gonna prove to be very complicated for my opponent, because if he charges his next turn, uh, he's gonna have to take some dangerous terrain tests on that part as well, so that part would be awesome for me. But anyway, so as you can see here, here's the movement for it, and everything just kind of storms forward, and gets ready to charge uh, for my guys in the next round. Here's a close-up of the uh, the, re the breakers, I'm sorry, the wreckers, as well as the tyrant kind of moving in as well. As you can see there, you also have the bulls, as well as the other unit of, uh, uh, what you call, of, um, of ogres also moving into that forest as well. And it kind of came up a set of positions, so we're kind of charge into my units here in a little bit. And as you can see in the very far back, the butchers just kind of like chilling out there in the bag, not waiting to go anywhere. So that's the close-up on this one. And here's a close-up of the war pig, who basically just kind of ran up for a position and to get ready for his charge the next turn as well, right behind Coedale. And that part could be kind of scary, might not. It just kind of depends on whether that guy gets into grips with me. So yeah, that makes a move for this one. Shooting was kind of a wash for my opponent because uh, his ogre kind of basically had two ogre pistols, missed both his shots, so nothing really happened there. So for there we go directly to the charge phase. You can see there has definitely been some charges. Uh, that unit of six ogres, the bulls, as well as the breakers, uh, charged into their respective uh, units right there in the far top of the board there, which is my right flank where Kodo is located at. However, he does fill his charges with his wreckers as well as his tyrant. They actually fill the role, so they say exactly where they're at as well. And then to make matters worse, the war pig was located in the back. He takes his two successes dice rolls of two rolls one and a one roll snake eyes in that part so the pack uh the war pig is still stuck back there unable to come to groups with my uh with my coido with my three man agent so yeah that makes it the charges on this one Here's a close up of the successful charge the ogres made across that cylinder that wild into my units. They did manage to lose two of their guys due to today's terrain tests. So that part actually did kind of happen there too. So they're not as much of a threat as they could have been uh, had they not lost two more of their guys as well when they came to the charges. So yeah, pretty much looking forward to the combat on this part of the roll to see basically how my Colonel Hunters uh, do against two to one odds pretty much. So with that out of the way, we go directly to the combat phase. As you can see, close combat was absolutely brutal in this battle. As you can see there, uh, they imagine there's one Kurnoth Hunter in the process of all this occurring, of course. However, my Kurnoth Hunters wiped out half of that unit of bulls and just basically took them down to the man on that part as well. Uh, mainly caused by attacks against that huge unit of the bulls as well. Uh, the reason why I lost one of my Kurnoth Hunters is because the other three uh, ogres, the uh, wreckers, of, the time of the wreckers, the breakers, uh, they managed to put enough wounds to kill one of my Kurnoth Hunters as well. So that part was kind of sad, but against the kind of odds that my hunters were facing against it actually worked out pretty well in my favor what really seemed was the fact that i was actually getting additional cover saves with someone with wildwoods as well and that really helped out a lot especially considering that a lot of my opponents guys were lost to danish train tests so it's also helpful as well so yeah that makes the combat phase with this one so with combat done we go directly to the battle shock phase and to make matters worse, the remainder of the pools that were charging up my Grenoff Hunters, they fled to the battle shock test. The only thing I gotta worry about now are the wreckers. Uh, the only ones I gotta worry about those three ogres, and those guys will be so much more problem when I get to my next combat phase. Uh, I'm assuming that my opponent doesn't roll for initiative. So with battle shock done, we go directly to the next round for turn number three. All right, we both enroll for initiative, and the Sylvaneth won their initiative on this part, so because that top of turn number three goes to me on this one. As you can see, here's overall shot when it comes to basically the command phase on this one. Really, the command phase is pretty much lackluster. Uh, I tried to cast some spells with the healing spell with uh, Koedil, but I was unable to launch that spell off, so because of that, uh, the regrowth spell just kind of disappeared. Nothing really happened on that part as well. Koedil, uh, not Koedil, I'm sorry. Uh, Dirthim uses his uh, some of the tree, uh, some of the other Sylvaneth Wildwood, and he puts that right between Koedil as well as the War Pig, so that way the War Pig wants to charge Koedil. He's got to deal with those problems as well of trying to get to Kodo as well. And at the same time, Kodo also has additional cover saves in case he gets charged at as well. So that makes up the uh, command phase for this one. All right, during the move, uh, command phase as well, as you can kind of see up in the top there, I kind of moved up my troops as well to get closer to the uh, ogres, get ready for charge as well. And with the command phase, now that second part, we go directly into the move phase. As you can see in the bottom of this picture here, I decided not to risk Kodo taking on that uh, war pig, so I pulled him out of combat, put him right over here in the far left-hand side of the board, where basically things are kind of safe, so that way he can kind of stay over here, stay isolated, deal healed up. And if he has to, you can put on some shooting or combat if he needs to, to give support to my Kurnoth hunters that are taking on those ogres there in the center. So that's moving on this side of the board. And here's a close-up of some more moving my dryads. You can see that move my dryads up to full seven inches. That way they can get in close combat with those guys when they charge on the next round as well. I apologize again for the blurriness of this picture, but uh, that's the close-up for this part here. 
And as you can see in this picture, Girthy decides he's going to take on the Pat of the War Pig instead. So he teleports all the way to this side of the board in order to put on some pressure onto the War Pig. And he's kind of looking like, come on, son, bring it on, which is kind of awesome, in my opinion. It just looks like the ultimate showdown between these two. So it's going to be pretty epic when that part happens. So that's moving for this side of the board. And here's a close of my drives. We're basically moving into the rear position there of those last three remaining uh, ogres, the uh, wreckers. We're taking out my Kurnoth hunters, and I plan on charging those guys into the back of those uh, back of those ogres and get them fully involved on that part. So, with uh, movement fully completed, we move on directly to the shooting phase. As you see in this picture, Kodel takes aim with a Doom Tendril Staff, opens up on that unit of uh, Ogres, the Breakers, managed to put two wounds on that guy, so that part was actually kind of cool in my opinion. I could have wished he could have done a little bit better, but you know, considering that he is wounded as well, and carrying three wounds, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. So that's shooting on this side of the board. In this picture, we didn't, we forgot to actually turn the dice on the tyrant here in this picture, but actually in this photo what's supposed to happen is that my three Kurnoth hunters armed with the great bows, they take aim and shoot at point blank range exactly the tyrant and manage to put two more wounds on top of them. So in this picture, the tyrant's actually supposed to be carrying five wounds, not three. I forgot why we forgot to, to turn the dice over, but uh, that's exactly what happened in this part here. So that tyrant's almost dead. My plan is that when I rush that guy, I'm going to put him down on the ground for good. And in this picture, Girthy managed to put a wound onto the uh, war pig. So, yeah, uh, not that fantastic, you know, it's just only one wound. But, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. You know, his limitation of spell, spare, uh, spell shooting ability isn't all that powerful to begin with, but, you know, uh, you know, I'll take what I can get. All right, so the shooting then we go directly to the charge phase. As you can see in this picture, basically everything that can charge does charge through. As you can see in the center part there, all the remainder of those ogres are just being sworn upon by everything and anything in my army at this point. So it's pretty fantastic. You see my dryads as well as my Kurnoth hunters charging into the wrecker, the breakers as well as the tyrant there in the center. I also got my dryads charging into the back of the uh, the breakers who are located on the northern part as well. Uh, Durthu even decides to join in the part of those guys, decides to abandon the, the war pig because from the way I'm seeing it, if I have a really good round of combat anyways, I'll destroy most of the Argon army anyhow, and then the War Pig becomes uh, entirely irrelevant to that point. So yeah, that's charges on this one. Here's a close-up of the dust, uh, the troop of dust charging directly to the uh, to the uh, Great Con there, so I have no problem about fighting that guy on. Hopefully I'll be able to take that guy out with, uh, with a couple of uh, equivalent attacks as well. As you see, I also got the troop of dust charging into the breakers from the front. I also got my quarter of summers charging to the flank of those guys as well, so those guys are now fully enveloped and uh, hopefully ready to be in the beatdown. And here's a close of the breakers being completely swarmed in now by my two Kurnoth hunters, my Court of Winters, as well as Dirth Dude. The third dude decided he's going to bring the fun on this one and just basically cause the pain to take place. So, yeah, with uh, charges out of the way, we go directly to the combat phase. All right, as you can see in this photo, the Breakers had a less than spectacular time. Dirthy managed to wipe out that unit single-handedly. He got four attacks through and wounded with the six wounds apiece. That's 24 wounds. Just totally vaporized that entire unit of Ogres like it's nobody's business. And once again, this just really confirms to me how awesome Dirthy is. No matter what kind of situation he is, he can always bring the pain. So that's common on this side of the board. And meanwhile, on this side of the board, uh, those wreckers were able to put down enough wounds, uh, four wounds, onto one of my Kurnoth Hunters. However, the Kurnoth Hunters have five wounds apiece, so they have one that's basically just barely alive. Between the attached to my Kurnoth Hunters as well as my... Uh, Dry as I would manage to wipe out that unit of ogres with no problem whatsoever. The combat between the tyrant as well as my uh, great bow wielding Kurnoth hunters went then left and went down to less than spectacularly. I lost one of my Kurnoth hunters in exchange, and I managed not to flip a single wound onto the tyrant either. So that part was kind of rough as well. So yeah, that makes up combat on this side of the board. And uh, with that, we move on to directly the bottom of turn number three. It's during the top bottom of turn number three that my opponent takes a look around the table, realizes all he has left is his tyrant, his butcher, as well as his war pig, and he decides he's going to call the game, and that brings us, ladies and gentlemen, to the end of the game. So as you can see in this photo, there's not really much left of the ogres left behind, just a bunch of so that they're just going to ready to swarm him wherever he's got left over. So yeah, my opponent just basically bottles out and decides to uh, voluntarily bow out on this one. So yeah, battle was pretty fun. Uh, I, even though I made that mistake of advancing forward, uh, because I got a little, little too excited with my uh, current outcome, I'm actually kind of glad to see it kind of worked out in the end, so that part is actually kind of cool with that part. So yeah, anyways, we'll talk about that during the after action report, because right now this game is now over. Sure, I could have stayed in the past. Could have even been king. But in my own way, I am king. Hail to the king, baby. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the after action report. This is the part of the battle report where we talk about what went well, what went poorly, what we can learn for the next time that we do another battle. This is the after action report for Age of the Realms, battle report number 12. It was a 1500 point match play battle. It was between I, Commander Chiefski of the Wild Hunt, with my Sylvanath army versus Burps of Blood of Stinkum's Legion with the Ogre Kingdoms. And it ended up being a victory for yours truly. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that allowed us to win this battle. First of all, I allowed myself to be bait in this battle, and I'm never doing that, making that mistake ever again. I should have stuck with my original strategy, you know, stay where I was, have the ogres advance to me even further, closer, would have lived down with some more missile fire, and then engage in a close combat. But, uh, so yeah, abandoning my strategy was like a back set the entire time. I was basically trying to figure out a workaround uh, from the moment that I did that. I'm sorry, I just got really super excited to try out that movement special rule that I get with my uh, free folk, uh, my free spirit uh, battalion rules. So I just wanted to try that out, and I just got really excited about it, and then I realized, oh no, what I'm doing! So yeah, it was kind of rough on that part. Um, one of the things I was really sad about on this battle port, because I was running at 1500 points, I was kind of sad I didn't have my Sternbark to help me out. He's my usual, my other third tree man they have in my army. I uh, rely on that guy a lot to take care of a lot of problems I have, flanking other units, adding support to my other dryads, so I might have to rethink about my point allocations and what sort of, because Sternbark was kind of sad as well. Uh, basically, the only thing that saved me in this battle report was the Wildwoods. In terms of uh, making my opponent take dangerous terrain tests for his charges, having my force do magical attacks or magics where you have magic was being cast within the nearby vicinity as well as doing saves as well those things really helped me out especially since i made the mistake of advancing too soon onto my opponent so because of that um that really helped me out a lot it was enough to whittle down uh purpose of blood's armies uh units down enough to where when i finally did engage them i was able to finally just take them out as well another thing to talk about is the moss spell the moss spell is just as scary as always it is just as scary as it was in warmer fantasy battle as it is now in ages sigmar that idea of causing up to d3 mortal wounds every turn uh and multiple times and potentially into infinity so long as you're rolling a four up on that part is kind of scary so that might have to do something to uh to deal with that one as, uh, as well in this one uh, along the spirit paths also see me in this game <coughs> excuse me as well uh, once again i you never leave home without it the ability to teleport your troops around the battlefield is always asset uh, especially when you got to navigate across that as well so that part is really really important so yeah once again, another good, good game changer. Um, and finally, you know, 1,500 points is kind of great and all. I mean, the game went kind of quick. It only lasted about an hour and a half for us when we actually played it out. But I think I need to go up to 2,000 points because, you know, 1,500s, I feel like I'm playing really bare bones of that part. And uh, I just really want to step it up and get another tree man in there and also get some more units in there and beef them up a little bit. So, yeah, I think that'll be my only time I'll ever play at 1,500 points and just move on to 2,000 at this point. So, yeah. Anyways, it was a fun battle report, fun opponent, great time as always. Looking forward to rematching that part so yeah that's going to round it up for this one for battle report number 12 as always feel free to like comment subscribe put your thoughts in inside your comments and your opinions in the uh, bottom of the comments section of the battle of the uh, screen i'm going to join the back and forth interact with you guys in the community as always so yeah just keep up the good work you guys all right so with that one that's going to round up for this one i will see you guys on the flip side adios